you are watching the Valley on ESPN. Welcome everybody inside the Ford Center here in Evansville, Indiana, as we got Saturday non-conference action here between the Green Bay Phoenix and the Evansville Purple Aces. I'm Alex Gould, he's Mr. Indiana, he's the more important one. That's Luke Zeller, and Luke, a good battle today between two pretty solid mid-majors. Definitely a great matchup today, Alex. We're looking forward to watching Green Bay. And for Green Bay, we're looking forward to watching Sandy Cohen. Sandy Cohen's been a great player for them. Really stood out against Michigan State. Had big moments in the game and a big game. And they were up on Michigan State. I think Sandy Cohen was a big part of it. You see the road trip they've been on as points per production. And uh, Coach is really challenging him to do more than just scoring. You just mentioned Sandy Cohen. Then we take a look at the Purple Aces side of things. When K.J. Riley goes, the Purple Aces go. And I think so. I'm looking forward to watching Evansville and K.J. Riley this season. 12 and a half points, but really helping the team go. And I think free throw attempts really shows his physicality, shows his aggressiveness getting to the basket. 35th in the country with fouls drawn. And so look for him today to get out in transition, try to draw fouls and be aggressive getting to the basket. Look at Link Darner in his fourth season at the helm of Green Bay. He's really turned the program around his first season. They made it to the NCAA tournament 2015 and 2016. Walter McCarty in his first year here at the University of Evansville. Kentucky product was the assistant coach under Brad Stevens. Both terrific coaches. I think so. I think a well-matched game. Both of teams, high-intensity offenses. We might be turning our heads quite a bit. I don't know how much you stretch your neck out uh, before already this game starts, but I think they're all ready to go, and both teams – Ready to get going here. Tip one by Green Bay. That was Shanquan Hemphill. The tank won the tip for Green Bay. Take a look at the starters there. You mentioned Sandy Cohen. He is pretty prolific. But not only does he score the basketball, he tries to assist to his teammates as he tried to do there down low to Manny Patterson. Basket no good. Purple Aces, Shamar Givens, the freshman talent. Kicks it over to K.J. Riley. Shamar with his first career start, I think adds a lot of intensity for Evansville. Really pushes the ball in transition, looking to get down and down the floor quickly, and I think Givens is a big part of being able to do that. K.J. Riley misses the lay-in, so both teams missing shots about three or four feet from the basket. No score, about 45 seconds in. That's Patterson who has it down low. Sandy Cohen the third. Try to step back a defense by Marty Hill. The kick over 4-3 is good. That is P.J. Pipes. A nice shot, nice drive and kick by Green Bay, just trying to get in rhythm. P.J. Pipes is only averaging seven this year. Three taken by Givens, no good. Rebound to Pipes. Pipes kicks it over to Sandy Cohen again. Green Bay wants to run. Cohen for three, no good. John Hall with the board for the Purple Aces. So both teams, they're going to push. There's going to be a lot of tempo. Should be a lot of scoring. I don't think we're going to have a problem with any shot clock violations no. today. <laughs> One of the lone seniors, Marty Hill for three is good. Triple is good. So we are knotted up at three. Both teams, they shoot the three at will. They want to score the basketball. A great shot by Hill. Just get a little tempo dribble, get his feet under him. A nice shot rising up and finish. Chance at an and one there for Patterson. Good feed down low. Patterson has a little bit of size on the Purple Aces down low. Manny Patterson this year. Last year he averaged six and five. He's up that tick a little bit now in his sophomore campaign. He's averaging eight points and six boards. He's going to be key here today, Luke, you know, and, and kind of exploiting the Purple Aces smaller lineup. And I think running the floor, and then you look at a Patterson who just played. Creighton, Michigan State, this road trip they were on and the bigs that he was competing against and then coming in here and being able to see what he can continue to do. Manny Patterson could be a, a big player for Green Bay as he misses the first one. Looks to hit the second one there. So Patterson goes one of two from the line. The, the only person that can kind of match up size-wise with Patterson, John Hall's pretty close in height, but then Danius Hotkavich is on the bench as Marty Hill drives to the bucket. He's got an early quick five for the senior in purple and white. Excellent dribble handoff coming off the screen and then coming right around the corner. Great drive, wide open layup. Good execution by Evansville in transition. Pipes up top, Sandy Cohen the third. Cohen the third, he'll look to facilitate as much as he can. That's McLeod, tried the Euro step a little bit. We got a hold, foul call. That's one of those fouls if you're playing pickup in the backyard. Somebody's arguing about that one. That, <laughs> yeah. That's a, a tough call. And the offense always calls in, the defense never fouls. If we let them call their own fouls, we'd be here all day. 
Phoenix 20 on the shot clock. We'll go keys to the game here, Luke. Looking at both sides, what is going to impact the way for Green Bay to get just their second road win of the year and the Purple Aces to continue their dominance here at the Fort Center? I think Green Bay and Coach Darner talked about it, talking with him yesterday, really getting back in transition, making sure they are pushing it offensively, but getting back defensively and then controlling the, play, the pace. As we're talking to him yesterday and asking him about Hey, at some point, if the pace gets too high, are you going to slow it down? He has no intention of slowing it down. Uh, there is not a too high of pace for Coach Darnold. For Evansville, protecting the paint, being able to make sure they're not, Green Bay's not driving to the rim. You mentioned it as they're trying to keep Patterson out of the inside, and then don't let Cohen get going. I mean, uh, Cohen is a tough player and can really get going as he gets confident, and as he gets more confident, he makes even tougher plays. Hemphill, the drive, no good. Purple Aces looked at pull push up here. Let's give this over to John Hall. John Hall tried to find K.J. Riley. Plenty of space and no one closed out on K.J. Riley. Riley was almost shocked at how much space he had. Really good offense by Evansville to start the game. They're moving the basketball, making open shots. Dribble handoff earlier for a wide open layup. Another great pass there for a layup. Good basketball from Evansville to start the game here. So three minutes in. Good drive there by Pipes. He's got a quick five. So him and Marty Hill the leading scorers so far. About three and a half minutes into this one. That's Shea Feehan, he's the leading scorer for the Purple Aces on this season. Came from Eureka College, that's Division Three. played there for four years. He would have come here for a fifth year. What a block there by Sandy Cohen the third says, not this time Marty Hill. Good defense by Cohen, I think that's what Coach Darner's challenging him to do is more of that, being able to defend. He's got potential to be a real impact, but as you look at Sandy Cohen here, just staying, keeping his man in front, going straight up and blocking the shot. That's what Coach Darner wants him to do more of, that and running in transition, competing every play. He's making plays, they just want him to do more of that. Yeah, that's, what, that's what Coach talked about. Coach Darner talked about Sandy Cohen the third has the ability to score even more than he already has. As the shot clock was winding down, K.J. Riley off the rim, no good. That's Hankerson who just checked in the game, and he will get a push off. That's an offensive foul. They'll call that 10 times out of 10. Great job of stepping in. and oh. Great job of stepping in as he comes in here and just getting set up. You know Green Bay's going to push in transition, so getting set up to take that charge. I, I love what Givens gives him on offense. Just that last time, drive and kick, misses a corner three, but gets in the lane, gets open shots, creating a lot for guys. It's it's tough for Green Bay to keep keep Givens in front of him right now. He's constantly getting past the defender, and again, gets an angle on him, misses a tough shot, but gets an angle and gets past the defender, creating rotations constantly. And the Phoenix looked to push, and that's a turnover. So it's 7-6, Purple Aces. It's going to be a close one, folks. We know you're going to stick with us here on Afternoon Basketball in Evansville, Indiana. 7-6, Purple Aces lead the Phoenix. We're back. Saturday non-conference action, Green Bay and Evansville. Purple Aces with a small margin, 7-6. But we're going to go to the third member of our crew, and that's Kenton Cruz. He's got a report on Green Bay and whether they like to play in Evansville or not. Kenton? Yeah, thank you. Green Bay is actually no stranger to Evansville. I've been here before. The city actually is a milestone in Green Bay's history. Back in 1974, Green Bay played in their first NCAA tournament appearance back when they were Division II. Uh, the city hasn't been much luck to Green Bay as they're 0-5 playing here in Evansville. Uh, let's see how that goes today. Thanks. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. And yeah, you know, Green Bay, we take a look at the history a little bit. They haven't liked Evansville too much over the years, haven't been here a whole lot, but they're trying to rewrite that script today, and they, especially what Coach Darner talked about, he wants to go 5-2 and two in mid-major games before they play Milwaukee next week in the Horizon. He does, and he talked about being able to fight and compete with teams that are on their same level, and being able to be here today, that, that has a team that they feel like would fit into that bill for them, and they really want to be able to get a win, and hopefully the games they're playing against those Michigan States, the Creightons, and teams like that are helping them prepare for games like this. Yeah, you know, and, and he talked about it. He said, listen, he goes, you know, we, as a blocking foul called. It's a good drive by K.J. Riley. The foul on Phoenix, number 10. That was Shaquan Hemphill who Hemphill. tried to take the charge. Blocking foul called. But, you know, 
Green Bay, uh, Coach Garner was talking about it on the interview a little bit earlier this week, talking about how he wants to schedule those tough teams. He wants his team to be prepared when they get into the Horizon League on the road, late down in the you know, stretch of things. He wants to be able to be prepared. And that's Cam Hankerson with the dunk. What a finish Hankerson. by Hankerson after the steal. Woo. Great finish by Hankerson. Great job of denying the passing lane defensively as Green Bay is looking to lock in a half-court defense. That's what... That's what Coach Darner's looking for, is those kind of stops and being able to get out and get a transition bucket. So that brings Green Bay up by one, eight to seven. Riley looks to drive, it's gonna be another steal. This one taken away by Hemphill. He's got you one, Newton. That is going to be a blocking foul and free throws coming up for Hemphill. So that's back-to-back -back steals, back-to-back -back turnovers for the Purple Aces. Much better half-court defense here out of the timeout for Green Bay. And Hemphill driving strong to the basket, but really Green Bay the last couple of possessions, reading the defense, coming out of the timeout. Coach Darner obviously challenging them defensively, and then they respond very well. A couple of deflections, steals, and one bucket, and then go to the line on the second one. Two Purple Aces check in. Evan Kuhlman, sophomore forward out of Liberty Township, Ohio, and the guard is sophomore Noah Fredericking out of Oakville, Illinois. Hemphill goes 0 of 2 from the free throw line, so the charity stripe not been kind to Green Bay so far early on in this one. Those are free points. We talk about it all the time on these broadcasts. You gotta hit your free throw. Got to, especially in transition there as they're trying to make plays in offensive transition. They're gonna draw fouls. They've gotta be able to knock those down when they get those opportunities. Givens tries to get to the rim again. Good rebound by Riley, tipping hey, good. So first time by Givens, no good. Second time by Riley, no good. Then third time's the charm for number 33 in purple and white. Purple Aces back up by one. Givens creating a lot for the Aces, really getting in the lane, really trying to finish. If he starts finishing those baskets, he's going to be a force for the Aces as they continue to, here in his first career start, it's amazing what confidence can do for a player, being able to have a career start, being able to have an opportunity to be out here. He looks incredibly confident each play down, and you can tell that Coach McCarty's trusting him and giving him an opportunity as he gets a quick breather. So that's Cody Schwartz who just checked in to the contest out of De Peary, Wisconsin. Transfer from San Jose State, as well as Hunter Chris out of Crown Point, Indiana. Hankerson, nice jumper. About an eight-foot jumper for Hankerson. So he's got an early four points. He's come off the bench really nicely for the Phoenix. Cameron Hankerson is only averaging 6.7 points per game, already has four. Just about six and a half into the contest. That's Danius Hotkavichis looks to back down. He's got to finish that one. But a good rebound by the freshman Newton to get the ball. Shot clock will reset. 3.30 for the Purple Aces. Frederick King back to Newton. Newton looking to make things happen now that Givens is out. They look to Kuhlman inside. Kuhlman to Hotkavichis, good pass. Hotkavichis will go to the line. Purple Aces, you got a second opportunity because of the freshman Newton. Make something happen, Hotkavichis goes to the free throw. Great interior passing as the bigs get it inside, trying to pass to each other. Great job of looking inside and they don't find each other. Evansville moving well right now, being able to attack the paint as they come across on the drive being able to move inside. Danny's hot cabbage is senior out of Carpeta, Lithuania. Missed the first, will shoot his second. Patterson checks back in for McNair. Take a look at Danny's hot cabbage on the season. Shoots it at 50%. Six for 12 coming into this contest. The statistics don't lie. <laughs> nice, nice looking free throw. He's keeping the same percentage. <laughs> So we get a tie ball game, 10-10. 13 minutes to go here in the first half in Evansville, Indiana. Really good crowd on tap here at the Ford Centers. Hankerson looks to drive again, missed lane. Seen a lot of good looks on both sides. Got to finish at the rim. A great rebound inside. You look at Cohen hasn't scored yet. And I think that's an interesting thing for Evansville focusing on Cohen. And if you're Green Bay, look for Cohen to start making some plays. And more good defense in the half court for the Phoenix. So they create another turnover. P.J. Pipes checks, checks back into the contest. So does Jaquan McLeod. Also in for the Phoenix, number 11, Jaquan McLeod. 
You know, we talked about Cohen, but McLeod had 17 at Michigan State, too, shooting four from five from three and really played pretty well in that game. So look for him to be pretty confident coming off of that game. Yeah, Cohen who had 22, McLeod had 17, Patterson with 10, Hankerson with 11. Four players in double figures against Michigan State. And again, their problem hasn't been, Luke, it hasn't been scoring the basket. You know, they're at the top of the Horizon League in points per game at 85. It's been allowing, you know, their, their opponents to score has been a, a lot more difficult for them, but it, it comes with playing the Michigan State, the Creightons, and so forth. It creates confidence when you play teams like that. Maybe not immediately yeah. uh, in the middle of the game and be, being able to compete against a team like that with some elite players, there's a, a challenge. But for them, you can see they, they've got an extra step even with a long road trip that they're on right now and confident as they come off. They haven't finished some of these shots, but they've been getting good looks. So McLeod missed the three. Now Newton will pull up. He was wide open. Banks it in. The bank is open the on Saturday. Bank, apparently. Wide open and there. So as you see it coming in. And, and there it is. Before, before you can even breathe. And that's something the Purple Aces have to be aware of is that they get all hyped up because Newton banks in the three, but then all of a sudden Cameron Hankerson's wide open. He's going to shoot the three right away. And I think that's for both sides. Goldie, my, my wife is a PhD student and a teacher at so she's the University, the and <laughs> she's way smarter than me. <laughs> and she talks about not getting too high with the highs and not getting too low with the lows. And I think that's, that's the thing. It's almost everybody talks about resilience and perseverance when things are going tough. You need the same thing when things go well. you got to turn back around and do it again. And I think that's for both teams as they try to become a little more mature. KJ Riley looked to push there. That one out of bounds. 15-13, Purple Aces lead 11-18 in the first. The MVC fan hangout is the perfect gathering place before and after games during Arch Madness. It's located at Ballpark Village in downtown St. Louis, just across the street from Bush Stadium. For additional information, visit archmadness.com slash fans. We're back, 11-18 here in the first half. Purple Aces with a slim margin, 15-13 over the Phoenix. We're gonna take a look at a little bit of transition defense, gotta get back. Good shot by Newton, Bank was open on the Saturday, but. Cameron Hankerson comes back down the floor, quick strike. This is what we talk about, not getting too high with the highs. They get it out, Green Bay gets it out quick. One pass, sprints to the corner, two passes, wide open three, that's an easy shot. They three, four seconds off the shot clock as they get down. Evansville's gotta get back in transition. Gotta move on to the next play. You can't celebrate, you're supposed to score when you shoot it. So you're supposed to move on to the next play and have to get there. I think that's the lesson for Evansville is they continue to figure it out and continue to work on improving as the season goes on. Both sides of this, Coach Darner talked about it for Green Bay as well. Patterson tries to back down Hot Cavages. Good interior defense by Danius Hot Cavages. Great Completely defense by Hot Cavages. Just staying there, keeping his body in front. High finish and a nice post up on the other end. And now a foul called on Patterson. A lot of times you see that in the sport of basketball. That's why it's so beautiful sometimes. Hotkavichus gets the defensive stop on the other end of the floor and then wants the basketball offensively on the other side. And he had a great seal. Really got his man deep inside the paint. Turned around and was ready to post up. Ready to finish. Shea Feehan back into the game. Looks for Evan Kuhlman. Kuhlman looking to back down shorts. Kuhlman. Nice move, about four feet away. Good tip back by Danny Sotkavich. As Frederick King doesn't care about the shot clock, tried to take it quickly. No good, still 15-13. Nice move by Kuhlman, nice tap out by Hotkavich. I gotta work on his name here <laughs> as we come out. Good offensive board by Patterson. Biggs really working on both sides. Patterson was, wow, interesting call there. Have to take a look at this one again. Patterson looked to save it. And referee on the baseline said it went off of Shea Fee here. We'll take a look at it. Looks like Green Bay might have, might have got a Christmas gift. Yeah, I, it was hard to tell. It was a tough call, but I, I don't know if it quite touched Shea Fee here. So the shot clock is not resetting here at the Ford Center. 
That gives us some, some time to talk a little bit. Okay, 15-13 Purple Aces. What do you like so far from Evansville? So far, Evansville very attacking the basket well, driving in the lane when they have opportunities offensively, turning the corner well, especially outside. And then inside, really Hotchkavichus and inside Kuhlman have done a nice job of trying to make plays inside and finish. Just haven't quite finished. A couple of hook shots. Nice turnaround last time down by Kuhlman, just finishing those plays inside. But they're doing well at getting the ball inside, either through the drive or posting up. Uh, Evansville's got to finish a few more. You know, another player I want to hone in on is, is, is P.J. Pipes Jr. That transition play, it's all set up because he looks up the floor. You know, that play where he got the ball to Hankerson in the corner after Newton made the three, it's his ability to recognize and say, hey, this, it was, this is what Coach Darner wants, wants us to do. we got to push. we got to look for, you know, a player in the corner. Hankerson was wide open. It's a good pass. He's got five points early and a couple assists. He looks really good. He does, and he's done a great job of being able to move forward. You can tell they, they practice it. Hankerson running to the corner. Hankerson was seven early on, and, and really a nice dunk early on, nice deny and finish with a dunk. Hits the transition three. In a good rhythm here to start the game. Hey, you have any IT experience? You need to go over there and help them? Listen, the monitor we were talking about earlier, the monitor was off here before the game started. I didn't even know where the power button was, so I don't no. think I'm going to be of any help. To go. That makes you more advanced than me. Listen, so. again, we talked about it. I, I, I'm, I'm okay at two things. It's talking and talking about sports. That's about it. Everything else is like, you know, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of looking around going, I have no idea what's going on. Again, uh, <laughs> Alex Gould, Luke Zeller, 10-11 to go. I think they got the clock figured out. You know, and we didn't have to help him, so that's no, a good, look at that, good you news. Know, we just got the talk. Cody Schwartz for three. That one banks is good. Wow. Look at that. Cody Three's Schwartz one. after all that. It's the Saturday. The bank is really open it's, on Saturday. I don't know if he pointed at the old National Bank sign up top, <laughs> yeah. but we've got two banks here on Saturdays, though, so the <laughs> bank is definitely open. Oh, man. We've got two, late hours. Two banks from three. Just how Jawan Newton and Cody Schwartz have drawn it up so far in the first ten. Hawkavich uh, just backs down Schwartz, feeds to Frederick. Frederick get, gets it stolen away by B.J. Pipes. He's been all over the place, both offensively and de defensively, and he looks to push. Going to take the mid-range jumper. That one no good. Rims in and out. Purple Aces now look to push. Green Bay getting a lot of deflections, really moving their feet defensively, trying to get deflections, gambling maybe even a little bit. Evansville's got to look to stay composed and calm as they get open rotations. Early on, they got a couple of layups and a couple of easy jumpers from Green Bay gambling on defense. Now they're getting some turnovers. So Green Bay kind of throughout the season watching some of their games earlier, they have no problem taking those chances defensively as they play. They may give up some wide open layups and some open shots, but they get more than often offensive transition opportunities. You know, and that transition opportunity right there, that's one that I, I think a one-on-one -on -one between Hemphill and Newton. It's really good defense by the freshman and Newton to force Hemphill to go to his non-dominant hand, the left side, and to kind of push him out to try and make that lay-in. There's Sandy Cohen, the third, just cannot get anything to go so far early. Still has no points in this contest. A nice play by Green Bay, trying to get Cohen going, get a little curl and screen inside. Marty Hill, this one is 4-3. That one, it's off the front iron, no good. Hemphill with the rebound. Now Pipes Jr. looks to push. Feeds Hemphill. The tank, they call him. What a move, and one to the basket. Great move, finds the defender on his feet. Great spin move all the way around and up for the finish. The tank gets to the bucket. Look at this one. Good dish by Pipes Jr. Just a trailer. Great, great footwork. Great finish coming all the way all the way over. Gets the and one through the basket. Great eyes on the rim as he turns around. You can see him catch his eyes on the rim and then follows all the way through. And great finish by Hemphill. To complete the three-point play, no good. So the Phoenix really missing some opportunities, some free points at the charity stripe so far this afternoon. Purple Aces haven't really gotten to the line at all today, so it's almost another turnover. Good defense by Sandy Cohen, the third. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Hot Cavage is working on Schwartz. Hot Cavage is nice. Move too easy for Danius Hot Cavage is working on the smaller Cody Schwartz. Nice move as he comes over, finishes on the weak side, finds uses the rim for protection on the rim, and on the other side finishes really well. Nice finish. 
Cam Hankerson coming back in. He knew he wasn't going to be out for too long. Jevin Smith checks into the game for the first time, fourth at Phoenix. So 18-17, and we said it before, we're going to keep saying it, it's going to be a close battle between these two teams. Hankerson tries to get to the rim, good defense by the smaller Shea Feehan. Marty Hill looks to push on Schwartz. A little bit of a mismatch. Hot Cavages into John Hall. Nobody there but number 33 and purple and white. Timeout. Green Bay crowd comes to their feet a little bit here to sold out Ford Center. 1918. Purple Aces lead under eight to go in the first. Ford Center, Evansville, Indiana, 1918. Purple Aces lead over the Phoenix. Take a look at that last play. Kind of, you know, miscommunication defensively for the Phoenix. Green, Green Bay trying to put up pressure, but Evansville taking advantage of it, finds spots, finds open defender, finds an open guy on the, on the offense, on the transition. I think Green Bay, because they're gambling so much, Evansville's got to make sure they stay calm, find that next pass to be able to get it to, and make sure they make good passes. Green Bay's trying to be up in the passing lanes. If they're patient and calm, they've gotten open shots, they've finished open shots, and they've done a great job of that when they take opportunities, but they've got to be patient within those. Alex, and as they have opportunities, they've got to keep moving the ball. Alex Cool and Luke Zeller, again, important one, not so much here, but, you know, I think for us especially, Christmas come early. You know, with the fact that we get to do this game here, you know, sold out crowd here at the Ford Center, electric crowd, you know, it's always a pleasure calling basketball games and whatnot, especially before the holiday season. This is this is, this is is Christmas come early, especially for me, no, I, especially I, doing I, a game with you. I enjoy it. I'm glad to be here with you, Alex. <laughs> this, this is a fun Saturday afternoon. I think a lot of people agree with us being here, and both teams doing a great job of being able to do what they do well, being able to play basketball and good opportunity for us to be here. As a shooting foul will be called, that's Cam Hankerson. Again, he's got seven points, leads all scorers on the Phoenix. And, well, he's averaging just 6.7 on the year. Really good sixth man for Green Bay. We'll take two shots here. Hankerson coming along well and just making a lot of plays aggressively, looking to attack, driving the basketball. Has made some shots as well. Really a nice player for Green Bay. So before that last free throw by Hankerson, he shoots it at 78% of the year. Phoenix were one for five. He goes two of two. So that'll bulk up the percentage a little bit. Three for seven now are the Phoenix. And again, the Purple Aces, who really like to get to the free throw line, have only been there twice so far today. That was Danius Hot Cavages, who went one of two. They look to him inside. Good interior defense by Schwartz. Good denial of the ball by Cody Schwartz. Hemphill looks to push. The tank again to the basket. John Hull with the denial. Sandy Cohen the third, instead of taking that one, passes it. That one is over to Smith. Off the front iron as Smith gets it back. Good hustle play by number 24 in green and white. Sandy Cohen the third tried to find Smith. Is that it's kind of an errant pass? It's a turnover for the Phoenix. Great defense last time down by Hall as he stay, stays in front of him, goes up and meets him at the peak and gets a stop. Evansville playing some nice defense. You know, you're a pretty big man yourself, I'd say. You know, how tough is that if you're John Hall kind of going away from the basket, his momentum's carrying away from the basket, but still to have that length and have that, you know, kind of wherewithal to not foul and to deny. It's all Hemphill. positioning before the play. And he did a great job getting position before the play and then being able to go up and meet him, staying on balance. Smith gets to the rim. Nice move, finishes with the left. So you can just see this Phoenix team really has some depth off of that bench. Again, Smith was one of the last players to check in for the Phoenix. Good kick from Riley to Frederick. Frederick came from three, and when he's uncontested, he's pretty much automatic. And this great job of Evansville getting the ball down the floor, being able to penetrate into the lane and be able to kick it out. They've got some open corner threes. They've just got to knock them down. They're getting good shots. They're running the offense well. You can tell Coach McCarty with his NBA experience with good spacing, being able to create for guys. Look at that, Sandy Cohen, the third misses two layups. Now KJ Riley looks to push. He feeds to Frederick King again. Frederick King pump fake, goes to the rim. Nice move by Frederick King. And that's all set up because of that last three. Then you get the defender to bite on the pump fake. Simple move to the basket. Nice job by Frederick King. Great basketball decision as he gets the defender out. Great job by KJ Riley last couple times of being able to get the ball down the floor, be able to create for his team. So Noah Frederick King on the year, averaging 8.5. Turnover, Marty Hill. 
Oh, Lil go the easy way with the lay-in. I think the crowd wanted the dunk. They'll take the two points either way. Purple Ace is now up. Largest lead of the day, 26-22. And starting defensively, Coach, Coach McCarty's got to be happy about how they're starting defensively getting a couple of stops and then making plays. Sandy Cohen the third finally gets his basket. That's with 5-10 to go in the first half. Purple Aces have done a really good job denying the most one of the most prolific scores in the Horizon League in Sandy Cohen the third. And you know Cohen's going to get going. He's going to continue trying to make plays. He's missed a couple of easy finishes inside. But really, Evans has made every basket, every, every play very difficult on him. Good denial here from the Phoenix. Hot Cavages, just too much. Foul called on the floor. You can just see that that battle down low is a little bit overwhelming right now for Crody Schwartz, who's having a, a tough assignment on Dania's Hot Cavages. That's the fifth foul on the Phoenix, so no bonus yet for Evansville. Plethora of subs come in on both sides. Both teams push the ball so much, being able to sub quickly, having fresh players out there. They've got to play deep. It's not a short bench when you're playing at the pace that both of them are want to play at. Givens over to Riley. Riley looks for John Hall down low. Good job. Defensively, we got, it looked like the baseline referee called a block out of bounds, but then sideline ref called a foul. So two free throws coming up for John Hall. Let's take a look at this one. Excellent pass by KJ Riley here. Just a little pass right off the defender's hip. And a great look inside. That was on Cam Hankerson with the foul. So John Hall will shoot two at the line. First one. No good. Both sides struggled a little bit at the free throw line so far today. Take a look at John Hall, averaging 10.6 per game. It's really upped his total. He's averaging eight rebounds per game. That's second in the Missouri Valley Conference. Gets the second to go. So he was shooting just 59% from the free throw line. So Purple Aces back up by three, 27-24. Again, we appreciate you joining us on Saturday, kind of, you know, Saturday night-ish here in Evansville, Indiana. It's the Phoenix to burn some shot clock here, get a good possession. Hankerson's wide open for three, that one is good. Man, has he had a day so far on Saturday. Another nice shot from Hankerson, a good job of just a simple post entry, replace as the defender goes away from him and knock down a shot. As John Hall gets to the rim, that one, the scoop, and it's good, 29-27. Strong drive by Hall. We see it again, right there. And again, the Purple Aces did not get back defensively. And they've done a really good job so far defensively, but on tr in transition, they have to get back, especially Hankers and the way he's shooting the ball. And everybody just being able to get back. They can't be shooting it open five seconds into the shot clock. And that's what Green Bay wants. So Evansville's got to continue to get back and probably some halftime adjustments and maybe a talk here at the media timeout from Coach McCarty to talk about making sure they get back and don't give up anything easy. Good pass by Givens over to K.J. Riley. That one no good. It looked like he was blocked by the rim. Hankerson looks to push. Pipes Jr. for three. That one is good. The transition offense for the Phoenix has really come alive within the last couple of minutes or so because of kind of a, a lack of the Purple Aces getting back defensively. And then you take a look at the tank. The tank will flush it down. That one is good. 32-29. Phoenix now on top. Back and forth we go here at the Ford Center. No timeout going to be taken by McCarty. He wants to let his kids play. Now I think that's Coach McCarty's NBA experience. They're not, not getting too high with the highs, not getting too low with the lows. Listen, they scored a couple of baskets. Yes, they are quick in transition and then a dunk. But still, that's not that many points. Let's keep playing. Let's keep finding a way to be able to figure out what's next and be able to solve problems. And Coach McCarty teaching his guys and building culture. I love it. K.J. Riley gets to the rim. That one no good. <laughs> Givens with the tip in. And Coach Darner didn't like that one. What a tip in by the undersized freshman. And that's why you Shamar let it go Givens. and don't call a timeout on a, on a run as Givens makes a play. Now you may need to call timeout. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that's kind of, you know, that's a lack of boxing out. And that's two defenders down there in Frederick King and Hall who could not secure the rebound. The tank gets the tip in. That's a huge hustle play. We talk about it all the time. You win and lose games. You know, just kind of hustling and getting second chance opportunity. Blocking foul called, and this will be a timeout officially. 154 left, 34 31. Time for the EVB 
Shamar Gibbons. What a job by the Tank. Tank flushes it down, 34-31. Minute and 54 left. Phoenix on top, 34-31. So they lead the Purple Aces. We're gonna kick it old school. 23 years ago, roughly, Walter McCarty, head coach of the Purple Aces, when he played at Kentucky. They were number five in the nation at that time. Only time he played against Green Bay as a player. Well, coach McCarty trying to go 2-0 and against Green Bay, but being able to being able to play out here, I don't know if he would have been coaching himself, if he would have been happy with the four turnovers, <laughs> but probably happy with the win. And obviously having a teammate like Tony Delk would uh, help out quite a bit as he's got unbelievable experience. And it's good. I know that in Evansville community, the way he's serving in the community back home, really making a difference for the people that are here. And I, I, he, he fits. I, I, don't, I don't know a better way to say it. He just fits the culture. He fits where he's at. I know the people in Evansville really appreciate the way that he cares for the community. He cares for each of the players here. It seems like the players love playing for him. And he's got the great demeanor, NBA experience demeanor. And he's looking at building a culture here at Evansville, uh, being able to really compete at their level. And it seems like he's building that with the system they've got, fun style of basketball. You've got a bunch of fans here on a Saturday afternoon. And Coach McCarty, obviously, trying to repeat what he did while he's at Kentucky here against Green Bay today. And we've got a good basketball game on hands. You know, and, and you talk about the Demeters. That three is up no good. But then again, second chance opportunity. That's McNair down low. Purple Aces do eventually get the ball as McNair missed a pretty easy land. But, you know, we talk about the Demeter. Purple Aces turned the ball over a couple times. And he doesn't need to call timeout. He trusts the guys. He lets them play. He knows, you know, just because there's two, over, tur two turnovers back to back doesn't mean that there needs to be a timeout called as John Hall is grabbing kind of his head area, face area there. Is. As you're talking about his calm demeanor, he does defend his guys when yeah, he needs yeah, to, Coach of McCarty. Course, of course. You know, excited and, and upset that it wasn't a foul just to stop it to play after he gets hit. And it wasn't intentional, but that's probably still a foul if you get right. hit in the face. Yeah, as you can see there, kind of a, a reach in. And yeah, not nothing intentional, of course, for McNair, but probably a foul that needed to be called, especially right in front of the referee. As Juwan Newton will inbound it with 15 here. Gets it in to Devin Straub, who's a local Evansville product. Checks in last minute and 20. Purple Aces got to go. Marty Hill, I don't know if he realizes. We'll see. Three seconds. He does realize. Shot is up. No good. Rebound to Bell. Good defense by Green Bay. Really had Evansville operating way outside the three-point line. Almost that entire possession after getting the inbounds. E.J. Pipes Jr. looks to facilitate. McNair working on John Hall. Doesn't have any. Good job to kick. Sandy Cohen to third now. About 12 to shoot. Tries to work on Hall. Really good defense by John Hall. Second chance opportunity. Sandy Cohen to third. High arcing three is good. And so far, that is what is crushing the aces. It's second chance opportunities. The Phoenix just want it more on the glass. They're doing Cohen a nice play, being able to drive and then still being resilient. Misses one shot, takes the next one, knows it's in. So 37-33, so Cohen the third now with five points. About a five second differential between game clock and shot clock. Ten to shoot for the Purple Aces. John Hall has it up top. Looks for a screen from Kuhlman. Kuhlman now for three pump fake. He'll take the easier two point basket, that one's good. Phoenix got a push, five seconds to go, 37-35. That's Pipes Jr. tries to get to lay and steal by Newton. He's gonna hook one up for three. This one is off the rim, just missed. Oh my, that one had a chance for the freshman. Good ending to the first half between the Phoenix and the Purple Aces. We love it, Christmas come early, 30. We're back, Ford Center, 37-35. The Phoenix lead the Purple Aces. It's been back and forth, it's been a boxing match. It's been a really good fight on both sides as we knew it would be. We're gonna go sideline to Kenton Cruz. He's got a report on both coaches. 
Yeah, thanks guys. So I got a chance to catch up with both coaching staffs. And Coach McCarty from the Aces really harping on the Evansville Aces getting back, playing that transition defense that Green Bay has really been able to capitalize on. On the other hand, Green Bay's coaching staff's really trying to get their guys to have some confidence, act like they can score the ball, because they know they can, take those open shots and score the baskets. Thanks guys, back to you. Kenton Cruz, perfect report. Always nice and poised and all right, second half keys. How do the Phoenix come away with a big road win that they really want before they take on Milwaukee in the rest? You know, I think for them, the continuing to pressure defensively and look to get out offensively is for them. They've been constantly in the passing lanes, trying to make plays again there, trying to make a steal and make, make a play. Some, Evansville's got to keep taking advantage of that. I mean, it's really the story of the game is Green Bay trying to gamble and get steals. Evansville, when they relax, make the next play. They're getting easy shots. It's just a matter of whether they can do it. Purple Aces, they're five and one at the Ford Center. They had a three-year non-conference home win streak snapped against Jacksonville State earlier, but if they're gonna shoot like that coming out of the half as Evan Kuhlman gets on the board with a big three there from Kuhlman. Good denial there from Riley to poke it away. But the Purple Aces, how do they protect the Ford Center? Come away with a big win, maybe that. Great execution <laughs> on a baseline out of bounds by KJ Riley coming up the middle and then just having a kick. Kuhlman spotting up in the corner and great finish. And that is going to be a turnover for the Phoenix. So a three for Evan Kuhlman in the purple ace. His turnover for Manny Patterson and the Phoenix. And this is just, this, this graphic right here that's about to pop up, this is just good research by Tom Benson, one of the best of the business. Take a look at the purple aces, you know, have struggled in the first half, but especially coming out that first five minutes of the second half, they come out hot. It's Evan um, Kuhlman, heat check, good. Second three in a row from Evan Coleman, the sophomore out of Liberty Township, Ohio. And then back and forth, McLeod, 4-3, no good. Purple Aces with the rebound. Evan Coleman starting out on fire here in the second half. Great shots by Coleman, and with those kind of second half starts, great research by Tom Benson, as you said. But Coach McCarty must have something up his sleeve for motivational speeches. <laughs> There's some days about 2 o'clock in the afternoon I could use a motivational speech. I may have to see if he can get his, get his number and get a call here once in a while. That is an eight nothing run to start the second half. That was too easy for KJ Riley, uncontested. That's too easy for Sandy Cohen, the third reverse lay-in is good. It's 41, there's 39. I mean, we are back and forth. Timeout, Coach Darner already. Good second half coming up. We're back here at the Ford Center. Quick timeout called by Coach Darner of the Phoenix as the Purple Aces erase the two-point deficit. They're now up by four. Evan Kuhlman, sophomore of Liberty Township, Ohio. Just averaged two points last year. Really deep, deep bench presence for the Purple Aces. He has six quick ones about a minute and 40 seconds into the second half. Evan Coleman with six points, minute and 40 seconds in. A great execution. I think that what started is great execution baseline out of bounds. You look at where Coach McCarty came from. His mentor, Brad Stevens, is probably one of the, regarded as one of the best after timeout, baseline out of bounds, sideline out of bounds, play calls. And Evan Coleman's spot up in the corner. Great draw up, great execution by Evans with KJ Riley coming off that screen. Gets Coleman his first look out of that baseline out of bounds and then knocks down another triple later in the later on and really has a great start here in the second half. Now the Phoenix came out after that timeout, kind of a man-to-man -man press. So, so you can tell now that Kuhlman kind of being guarded up top there by McNair. So they're, they're going to make sure that he doesn't get another open three. K.J. Riley laying in contested. Good defense by the Phoenix out of the timeout. As we are having score and clock issues, it's 43-39, 17-45 to go here. Back-to-back -back lanes there from McLeod, no good. Marty Hill the rebound, he looks to push. Good step by Hill, goaltending call, baskets good anyway. You don't get four points for that, you just get the original two. Good move by Hill, just so quick to the bucket. Excellent drive by Hill, and I think everybody else on Evansville running in transition helped that there was no help side defenders that could load up in the middle. Excellent job by Hill of being able to move his defender one way, cross over and come to the middle. Great finish inside. So now 45-39, 17-25 left here in the second half. Cam Hankerson checked back in, sixth man for Green Bay. Good defense by Evan Coleman. They are really 
denying Hemphill and McLeod down low here to start the second half. So again, Evan Kuhlman, he's a role player off that bench for Walter McCarty, but Purple Aces have a really good bench. He, he can go to a lot of guys in pressure situations. 17-10 to go, five on the shot clock. Hankerson drives, the shot up, mid-range jumper, no good. Good defense by Shea Feehan, tip out by McLeod. Hankerson again. Now it's McNair and a foul is called. A second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. That was the kryptonite for the Purple Aces in the first half. And there's a lot of offensive rebounds on both ends and being able to clean up defensively. I think both coaches would like to see better box outs, one shot and done. Both of them want to run in transition. If they could get a stop and a rebound and be able to get out, both teams would be happy. There's a lot of offensive rebounds at both ends. McLeod drives in, a blocking foul call. I don't think the ace is faithful like that one too mount much, so McLeod will go to the line to shoot two. Simple curl here. Ankerson over to McLeod. McLeod took, took on Chafee here, got the uh, foul call. I don't know if he was on the charge circle there on the... On the foul, looked like he might have been set, but couldn't tell on his feet. So Jaquan McLeod take the first one. So you hear the boos. <laughs> that first one is, is good for McLeod. That is just his, is that his first points of the game. That is his first point of the game again. That's 17 against Michigan State. So he's been locked down. Her place has really done a nice job defensively. Coach Marty McCarty good. calling for his guys to defend together rather than just defending individually. Talked about it yesterday when we talked with him and just as he's talking about guarding as a team and guarding as a unit, making sure they take ownership of it. And they've really done a nice job of that here tonight. So Sandy Cohen the third, who's averaging 16 a game, has seven so far. It's about three and a half into the second half. Riley didn't really get a good lane on that lane. Again, kind of blocked by the rim. This one is Hemphill down the lane. It's the tip in by McNair. And again, a second chance, no box out by the Purple Aces as it is 45-43. Green Bay back within two. 12th offensive rebound for Green Bay. If you're Coach McCarty, you cannot be happy about that and being able to give those up. Foul called, and again, technical difficulties again. Kind of the clock going in and out. 18 on the shot clock. The foul foul called on the floor. Number 11, Jaquan McLeod. Jaquan McLeod gets the foul. That's his first personal. Team's first of the second half. 16-14 to go. Purple Aces lead at 45-43. As McLeod looks like he has a little bit of a cut on the forehead, so P.J. Pipe's going to check in for him. If the viewers at home can't see the score, I typically have dry erase markers and a board with me, Perfect, so I can yeah. pull that out and put the scoreboard up if we need to, if we can't get it, the technology. That's my old school technology working here, Alex. <laughs> hey, you know, whatever you gotta do to get the score there, I think they'd be okay with that. See, I don't know if I ever trust my penmanship enough or my artistic ability to, to, to get that one done. My As penmanship's terrible, but I can read it, so that's what matters. <laughs> yeah, right, there you go. That's KJ Riley. Good step back, he'll take two, foul. On P.J. Pipes, who just checked in. So P.J. Pipes just checked in. Quick foul. K.J. Riley will shoot two. And we talked about this. K.J. Riley really hasn't gotten to the free throw line too much today. But, again, he's top 25 in the nation when he does. This is his first free throw. We talked about top of the show of being able to get to the free throw line. And K.J. Riley's done a nice job of creating for his teammates, being able to get in the lane and make plays. And on that play, a nice post up as he felt like he had a mismatch and makes a nice post up and gets a lot. K.J. Riley Jr. in Bronx, New York, misses the second. He's a 78% shooter, so does one of two from the line. Both teams have left some points out at that free throw line today. Sandy Cohen the third, he's gonna take a three. He was calling for it all the way. That one is off of the back rim, back iron, so Purple Aces get the board. Again, 46-43, Purple Aces lead. 15.40 to go here in the second half. 20 on the shot clock for Marty Hill. Looking to work on Hankerson. K.J. Riley going to reset. Coach McCarty going to call a play. As shot clock gets down to 10. Evan Coleman, now shot clock is down to 5. Purple Aces got to go. K.J. Riley, turnaround jumper is good. Nice shot by the junior from Bronx, New York. And K.J. Riley, last two possessions, has liked his matchup in the post. The last time on the low post, that time in the high post, has made good decisions, squared his shoulders, and taken nice shots. Purple Aces lead 48-43, 15-11.
left. As we are gonna get a timeout after the foul by the Purple Aces. So about five minutes into the second half, Purple Aces regain the lead, 48-43. back 48 43 purple aces lead the phoenix after the first media timeout take a look at this is kind of a play that set up the purple aces here in the second half really got them going great execution by walter mccarty great great after timeout baseline out of bounds play kj riley takes the ball out simple screen up to kj riley and he rips gets a defender to draw in coolman just spots up in the corner like he's shooting around on a Sunday afternoon or here on a Saturday afternoon, yeah. stays spot in the corner. K.J. Riley does a great job of cutting hard off that screen, driving in the middle, drawing Kuhlman's defender a couple steps off, and Kuhlman has a wide open three. That got him in rhythm and got him started, but great job by Coach McCarty of being able to execute a baseline out of bounds. That's a big part of the game, especially in the NBA, of being able to execute and score on those plays, and just a great job of executing there. So again, we, we showed that graphic earlier on in the second half. Is this mid-range jumper no good after the timeout? Purple Aces were down 37-35 at half, but something about whatever Walter McCarty says or whatever, however the team gears up, those first you know four or five minutes until that media timeout, you know they were able to outscore the Phoenix 11 to six. As that one is rebounded by High Cav, just kind of lost it for a second, fumbled it like it's Sunday afternoon in the NFL. Purple Aces, after a couple of opportunities, cannot convert. Now the Phoenix look to push. Not a good pass by Pipes Jr. over to Sandy Cohen, the third, a turnover for the Phoenix. Evans, the last time down, nice passes, a good open look, and then trying to crash the offensive glass. So again, the Purple Aces, they're 5-1 they're and one at home. They, they like to protect the forward center. As I mentioned earlier, a couple weeks ago, they lost to Jacksonville State here 55-50, which is their first home non-conference loss in three years. Three years against Jacksonville State. Hot Cavage just working on Schwartz. <laughs> Looked like it was gonna, <laughs> was gonna miss that lay-in. Hot Cavage just kinda thought he was, was fouled. Should have had a chance at a free throw there, but a good finish again. He's been a, a, a lot to handle for Cody Schwartz. That's a great finish inside. Just takes a couple dribbles, looks nose. He has no help side defense. Has a one-on-one -on -one matchup and finishes. Cam Hankerson gets fouled. It looked to be on Hot Cavages. We'll see if it does go on him. Hankerson does a great job uh, of cutting down. hard. When he has opportunities, he's really cutting hard coming off as he has this. He cuts hard off these screens, which creates this opportunity the defenders to step behind him and he gets to the basket. Each play he has, whether he's running in transition or he's cutting. Hankerson here today really being able to look at just making good plays. That whole be quick but don't hurry that John Wooden talked about. Hankerson does a great job of doing that here today. As now they're tending to Danius Hotkavichis, who might have either lost a contact, got caught something along those lines. Do you wear contacts? I do, and it, it's frustrating when you lose them. It's always awkward when uh, you're trying to be a seven-footer on the floor, laying around trying to find a little contact. Yeah, I've had that pl problem plenty of times, trying to be a seven-footer on the floor. <laughs> you'll, you'll grow up one day, I yeah, promise you. Know, you'll I'm get there. I'm trying, you know. I still, you know, I, I, I still think that, you know, I'm gonna hit this spurt when I'm, you know, about 20, 25, you know, 30 years old, where I'm gonna get, you know, about half an inch. That's what, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping I get to about five seven. That's Keep kinda, working. That's kind of the goal. <laughs> Ankerson. Hits the first. He's just been dynamite today for the Phoenix. Leading scorer for them so far. Tuna. Yes, he's got 13, now 14. He's got a money stroke from the free throw line. Really nice player. Again, just averaging 6.7. Kind of surprising. I mean, I feel like he's a guy that, especially if the Phoenix want to compete in the Horizon League, which we think they will, they got to get him, you know, going even more so. He's been really good today, really making a lot of plays on both ends of the floor. You know, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Sandy Cohen III. Very similar builds, very similar kind of styles of play. As foul call this will be on the floor. And if they could get both of them going, they'd be in an <laughs> even better spot right now. The foul on Phoenix, number two, Hankerson DJ doing quite a bit more. Not that Cohen's got seven points and is slowly getting going, but not what he has been able to do. Ken Hankerson, not, not a starter for this Green Bay Phoenix team. He's six man off the bench. He's really got a chance if he stays John on the bench. It's John Hall, just too easy. Excellent working on move. the tank down low. But, you know, Hankerson's got a chance uh, to be a, a, an all six man type of player in the Horizon League, let alone potentially start here down the stretch as the Purple Aces took it away now. Now we're Fredericking up top over to Kuhlman. It's a good steal by Givens. It's, again, he's just given them solid minutes. Just a freshman. You're going to see him in purple and white here for another three years after this. Tend to shoot. Frederick King, what a find. That one well short. You could tell 
from a mile away that that one, Frederick King didn't really get the legs underneath it. Santa Cola third working on Jawan Newton. So the freshman Newton gets the kind of assignment on the redshirt senior in Santa Cola in the third. That three was no good. So 12.30 to play here in the second half. Purple Aces largest lead of the contest. They lead by seven points. Again, the first half, as, as you were mentioning, kind of off camera, saying that you know the largest lead on either side was four. Been a really tightly contested battle. It's Noah Frederick in good move. He'll get to the line for two. Good decision by Coach McCarty there as he's trying to get seven-point game. You get a good stop. You want to make a nice play, and he gets a good set, trying to get the right matchups to be able to make a play and make a finish. A nice drive by Frederick in there to be able to draw the foul. Good offensive execution. Evans will change a pace on that possession, not just pushing it to push it, but really trying to make sure they get a basket. Coach McCarty feeling right here that they have an opportunity to push this lead out. They have the largest lead of the game to continue to push that lead out with a Green Bay team that's going to make a run. They're, they're not going to they're, No, and they're, they're going to score going. quickly. They'll get this out quick, and they'll push it on the floor here again. So Noah Frederick King, who surprisingly just shoots it at 67%, but he was 100% on those two free throws. Now Purple Aces again keep extending their largest lead. They're up by nine. Sandy Cole in the third, who goes quickly. Really nice defense there by the Purple Aces. They have really locked down defensive. They've really made it hard for number one in green and white so far this afternoon. Again, he's averaging almost 16 points a game. That's, that's top eight in the Horizon League. Such a terrific player, but he's really had a lot of contested shots. What a pass by Newton. The flush by Danius Hotkavichis. Purple Laces lead by double digits. They lead by 11. As Coach Dorner wants a timeout, this will bring the crowd, the sold out crowd at the Ford Center to their feet. They love the play from their aces here to start the second half. They lead it 56 45. Nice pass by the freshman Newton into Hot Cabbages. Hot Cabbages with the flush. Man, what a start in these first eight minutes. 56 45. They have outscored the Phoenix by 13 here to start the second half. And you're the, you're, you're the analytics guy. You're going to break this one down. Excellent spacing. Coach McCarty making sure the guys have great spacing. That great spacing creates post-up opportunities inside. So making sure they have the guys outside. There's no help side. Great seal inside. Great post-entry pass away from the defender. And then a great finish inside. And so really Evansville playing some really nice basketball here in the second half. Being able to find the right time to run. And when they don't run, they're executing really well in the half court. Coach McCarty's got to be really happy with pace and decision making here to start the second half. Plus, I don't know what he says in these, start, these halftime talks, but I'd like to be able to get a preview of that. That might be something I need to replace my alarm clock with. I was going to say, I'll morning. sit here. You can go over there and listen, and then you can come back for, with a big report. Is, again, we talked about the Phoenix. There's no panic in this Green Bay team, especially this offense that averages 85 a game. That's top 12 in the nation you know, in scoring. Average 85, they are just so terrific at scoring quickly. So again, down nine points, carry called, easy call there on John Hall, and I don't think that's exactly what Walter McCarty wants there out of the break, is John Hall handling the ball up top. Well, and, and making multiple moves and his defender not moving. So uh, Hall trying to make a play and just trying to create something from nothing, moving the basketball and moving it towards the basket is what Evansville's been good at. Good dish in Sandy Cohen the third, tough finish. That was really contested, as it has been all night. Now Sandy Cohen the third with nine points, really good finish at the rim. Cohen's a nice basketball player. You can tell he's gonna he's he's gonna make some plays, and that's a really really nice finish between defenders there. Sandy Cohen the third, who transferred from Marquette, he was the only freshman awesome. starter at Marquette his freshman year. Played two years at Marquette, decided to transfer, had to sit out, go through that process, and then got to play around you know mid December last year. And, I mean, he's just was such a terrific player last year in the Horizon League. They knew he would be. They knew it was an unbelievable get. He's got nine so far today, but it's been tough. The Purple Aces have made it, have made it really hard on him. That's foul going to be called on Manny Patterson down low. He was working on Danius Hotkavichis. That's, again, that's a good battle to watch here in the second half. Those two going at it. It is. And, and big fellow run, runs all the way out. Danis runs all the way out, sets a great screen, and sprints to that screen and then rolls hard and really just working hard inside on each possession, making it difficult on Green Bay. 
All right, you're a big man. We'll put you on the uh, you know defensive side of things. If you're Manny Patterson there, how do you stand your ground and, and you know kind of play it where you're not fouling so much down low on on Daniel Hakavicius? Good question, Alex. I think the biggest thing is doing your work early. You've got to make sure that he does not touch a foot in the paint. You've got to make sure to make contact as early as possible and as often. And then when he sprints to that screen. Patterson got a couple steps behind him when he sprinted that screen, which created the opportunity in the low post later on. And he's he's got to be able to stick with him. And that's not easy to do. <laughs> that part's no, not easy. No, not when he's not when he's sprinting. <laughs> that part's not easy. It's KJ Riley leaning there and kind of willed that one to go and hit the front rim. That one's in. So Purple Ace is back up by eight. 57-49. So KJ Riley gets geared up for his second. I had the opportunity to spend a couple of months in Lithuania, and when I showed up, they said that there's uh, two religions in Lithuania. One's Catholic, and then there's basketball, but they only take one seriously. Yeah, and which one is that? Show up in the airport, and they've <laughs> yeah. got top to bottom pictures and posters of every one of their national players. So he comes from a great lineage in Lithuania of basketball and being able to really play all the time, sprinting and competing is what they're used to from the time they're 13 and 14. You know, and he had tough shoes to fill here in a Purple Aces uniform. Hankerson just doing what Hankerson does best. Mid-range jumper right around the free throw line. Really nice shot. Now all of a sudden, Phoenix creep within six here. Purple Aces faithful, trying to get a little bit louder. But Denny Sotkavichis, he had really tough shoes to fill. And Gideas Matskavichis, as that one's just too easy, speaking of DC. Number 14 in purple and white. He's really working hard, but he had tough shoes to fill. And Gideas Matskavichis, he was one of the best players ever in program history. You know, got to play in the D-League a little bit for the Brooklyn Nets. You know, one of the most prolific scorers in the Valley. He averaged a double-double, it seemed like, every single night his senior year. Uh, you know, in a Purple Aces uniform. Is that three from Hankerson left short? But Danius Hakavichis, he didn't want anyone to compare him. He wanted to be his own man when he came in here, you know, in the Purple Aces uniform. And I really think they're going to need him, especially his size presence when the Missouri Valley Conference play starts next week. And if he keeps sprinting the floor and sealing in the post as hard as he is, they're going to be able to use him quite a bit. He's really played well tonight really being able to work hard on each possession. The way that he sprints to the post and sprints to the ball screens is simple, but it's a huge fundamental that makes a big difference. Sometimes simple is all you need, you know, looking at some of the fundamentals of basketball. But, yeah, you know, it, it, the Purple Aces who, they, they go to Miami, Ohio. Again, they have not won a road game all year. Is that kind of, for, for the Purple Aces, is that kind of a must win next week? against Miami, Ohio on the road, not having won. Then you got conference play starting right after that. I think for Coach McCarty, just trying to build a culture and build a culture of opportunities that they can take advantage of those. I, I don't know that it's a, a must win, but it's a must compete, must build what they're building. And last possession down, Evans will switch us to his own defense just to change it up and get Green Bay a little bit out of pace. And you can tell they're worried about the great role. Oh, as Doc Cavett just tried to dunk down the city of Evansville. Missed on that one. Then a lay-in, no good. Tip in by Hankerson. And again, no one has found an answer for Cameron Hankerson. What a day. We got a career day for number 21 in green and white. Again, kind of a momentum shifter there from Hot Cavett just missing the dunk. Maybe it was tipped out a little bit by Patterson, but then down the other floor again, you know, Green Bay getting a second chance opportunity. Marty Hill, mid-range jumper, that one off front iron. Second chance opportunity for KJ Riley. He thought he got bumped. So did Walter McCarty. No foul called. Cameron Hankerson pushes over to Bell. What a pass. What a find by Hankerson. That is so pretty. Great pass by Hankerson. He's really a playmaker here today as he finishes the last possession down. Great play. And this is where Coach McCarty remaining calm that calm leadership is contagious for each of his guys they don't get frazzled when green bay goes on a run come down to execute that's going to pay off for him down the stretch coach mccarty really showing the willingness to be resilient stay focused no matter what the score no matter where the runs are at they're still up six and so understanding that they are still up six and playing like they're up six rather than coming down a little bit frantic foul was called on the Phoenix. North Frederick King checking back into the contest. So is Coolman. But take a look. I mean, the reason that Green Bay's down six, if it wasn't for Cameron Hankerson, they, they would really be in trouble in this one. I mean, he's got 18 points. You saw that last assist over to Bell. Just a beautiful pass in transition. 
the junior guard out of Novi, Michigan. I mean, what a terrific job he's done so far tonight. Again, just averaging 6.7 points per game. He shot 50% from the field last year, but really didn't have a big role. I think after today, he's going to have a much bigger role on this Phoenix club. He's playing really well, and Green Bay together, 13 offensive rebounds here on the game, and Evansville even getting back off the free throw to make sure they get back in transition. They're putting up shots in four and five seconds off of this transition, so making sure Evansville's already back. Green Bay's still going to get it across the court really quick and be able to push. It's almost like when you're shooting your second free throw, if you're KJ Rowley there, you're kind of leaning backwards, getting ready to sprint back the lob. Alley-oop, good, Bell, that's two straight buckets for him and he'll take those all day. Two easy ones, great assist. Alley-oop, good, again, still just a six point advantage here for the Purple Aces. Givens looks to kick, he is going to drive to the bucket, get fouled, and we will go to break. Good job by the scrappy Givens to get to the rim. 63-57, Purple Aces lead. It's gonna be a good finish here in Evansville, I can assure you of that one. 2019 State Farm Missouri Valley Conference Men's Basketball Championship returns to the Enterprise Center on March 7th through the 10th. Get all your session tickets to Arch Madness today and save $20 by calling 812-488-2237 or order online at gopurpleaces.com. All right, 63-57, Purple Aces lead, 7.38 to go. It's going to be a good finish. Everyone knew that. It's going to be a tight one. Phoenix look to push. Purple Aces, can they hold them off defensively? Can the Purple Aces maintain this offensive prowess that they've had? I mean, it's it's really been a boxing match. It's been back and forth like we knew it would be. And this has, this has good finish written all over it here in Evansville. And I think both teams are playing well. They're playing their game. They're both getting out in transition. Making adjustments as they go. KJ Riley's made some nice adjustments now with 14. And then for Green Bay, Hankerson with 18 has been really the story. Cohen's got nine. So look for Cohen to get going as, as Hankerson has played well, but Cohen's still their guy. And you can tell that he continues to be ready. So as Green Bay looks to make a comeback, look for Cohen to make some plays here. So Chris checks into the game for Hankerson. Hankerson's got four fouls. He's gonna be sitting for a while, and that's a turnover as Cohen couldn't come up with it. Givens runs the floor, and he's gonna reset. Good, smart play by Givens to reset. He knew he didn't have a chance there after a tough pass. As KJ Riley looks to push. He's gonna find Marley Hill. Marley Hill for three, that one no good. Rebound to McLeod. McLeod looks to push now. KJ Riley's done a great job of driving into the paint, and when he doesn't have it, kicking out for open shots. McLeod, he checks shot by McLeod right in the face of Givens. He knows he's got a height advantage there. And you're assuming, Coach Darter says, if you have it, take it. Again, he had 17 points last time out. And the Green Bay's biggest win, which came against Belmont this year, Belmont's 11 and one. They have one loss all season. That was two Green Bay at Green Bay. And 100 to 92 game is an absolute, you know, slugfest. Uh, in Green Bay for that one. McLeod had 21. You know, when, when he goes, they go. They're going to need him here in the last 642 to go as McLeod picks up the foul. McLeod with a nice shot, but really hasn't gotten it going yet to this point. Cohen's gotten it going a little bit, but McLeod is not. And that's, that's McLeod's fourth. So foul trouble for Green Bay with McLeod with four and Hankerson with four. Riley makes the first, yeah, McLeod and Hankerson, you know, that's those are two key guys that they need here down the stretch, and Coach Darn is gonna let McLeod play. KJ Riley, 15 points again. I mean, what, what a year it's been so far for KJ Riley. He's now got 16. KJ Riley, uh, Luke, only had seven points and three rebounds last year. That's all he was averaging, and I mean, stepping up in the, Biggest way this season, 16 points today. He's averaging 12 and a half on the year. He's got the uptick in rebounds to almost five a, a game as Bell takes a three. That one was no good, but a second chance opportunity. That's what's gonna keep the Phoenix around is those second chance opportunities. That's their 14th offensive rebound. Those second chance points are really, really hurting it. For Evansville, they're getting nice stops. It's a tough three, but they've gotta get a box out and make sure they get that defensive rebound. Marty Hill has it up top, now John Hall. You're right on K.J. Riley. He really makes this team go, and it seems like Coach McCarty's system 
being able to run in transition, being able to be spaced out in the floor, fits K.J. Riley, and now he has a smaller defender on him with a great post up. Draws the foul, but K.J. Riley really fits well in Coach McCarty's system. Coach McCarty understanding mismatches, understanding spacing, and really making good decisions. K.J. Riley, the smaller defender, great post up. And for the opportunity to have a guard that you can post up when he has a smaller defender on him, really gives him, Coach McCarty tons of options on the bench and with assistance that he has over there that are able to see those mismatches, really has a great opportunity to take advantage of it. Riley, who drills the first, he's, he's done a really nice job this season and really smart too, you know, realizing that he has the mismatch. He wants the basketball. This year, he wants the basketball. He wants to get the ball. He wants to be a scorer, but he also wants to facilitate to his teammates. He wants to be kind of an all-around player, have that kind of, you know, five-tool aspect as we talk about in baseball all the time. Kind of, you know, be able to, you know, dribble, drive, and go to the basket or kick if he needs to. And one, Sandy Cohen the third says, hey, I can do that too, guys. I mean, what a nice move, so explosive to the rim. A nice play by Green Bay to be able to clear that side, giving him isolation. K.J. Riley's got to stay there and help side defense as you see him move to the side. And that's what Coach McCarty's looking at for the next level of team defense. K.J. Riley hits a couple free throws. Then on that next possession, he's got to be there and help side. His defender's going, his man's going away from the ball. He's got to be able to turn around, and that's the next step for him. And each of these players on Evansville, they've done better playing team defense the last few games, but they've got to be able to lock in and be able to be there on the help side. They can't get beat on the first initial play. But if they do get beat, they've got to have somebody there to help. Turnover by John Hall. Phoenix have a chance to go down by one possession here. Fine to Sandy Cohen, the third. Didn't want the three, tried to drive in. Maybe should have taken the three. Now Marty Hill and the Purple Aces look to push. He's got Kuhlman. Kuhlman over to Marty Hill. Nice pass, smart pass, three, good. See that from a mile away. Unselfish play from Hill to Kuhlman. Kuhlman back to Hill. Hill for the triple. Great transition in basketball. Just making simple decisions, but making it difficult for Green Bay as Evans will push the ball in transition. McLeod now, he's starting to heat up, and we said he needed to. So both teams trade three-point blows on both ends of the floor, 72-68. You can just feel it. This, is, this, has, you know, this has a really, really good finish brewing. With McLeod about 40 to go. And McLeod was 0 for 4 before he hit those last two threes. Yeah, you but know, and that's the kind of player he is. Once he gets going, he's going to get going. K.J. Riley now again mismatch on Chris. They're trying to exploit that as much as they can. Good pass. Frederick King it's over to John Hall. John Hall will take it. The three is no good off the front iron. Offensive rebound, Marty Hill. Hill reset. Smart play by Marty Hill. Now Noah Frederick King from three. That one no good. Sandy Cohen the third with the rebound. Again, have a chance to go down by one possession here. They look to push. Sandy Cohen the third takes it right to Marty Hill. Charge, offensive foul called. Good defense getting the feet set by Marty Hill. Excellent defensive transition for Evansville. Just simple. Get in front of him. Sandy Cohen's trying to make something happen, trying to make a little bit too much happen. Steps right in front and takes a charge. That's a simple fundamental, being able to sacrifice your body right there. And a really Excellent big play. play. Momentum shifter, I think, you know, to, to, to kind of halt that momentum that the Phoenix had a little bit. Marty Hill took a charge against Murray State with about four minutes to go in that contest. That was really, really big as a reach and foul is going to be called. Again, KJ Rally just foul looking to make things team. happen left and right. What a nice drive by Riley there. So again, they're in the bonus. He's going to go to the free throw line. He's going to shoot two. They're in the double bonus already. KJ, KJ Riley, 8 for 10 from the free throw line already. Taking a couple more here. Really does a nice job of drawing fouls just because he's attacking towards the basket. So Riley now with 19. Shamar Givens looking to check in for the Purple Aces. KJ Riley was the leading scorer against Murray State in Murray, Kentucky last game. He had 13 points, 11 boards, and a really tough loss for the Purple Aces. A game in which, you know, I don't think a lot of people gave them a chance to even hang around in. The Purple Aces really fought. They were up by seven. Almost feel like, you know, and Coach McCarty talked about it, he's proud of his guys, really proud of the effort. Almost feels like got away from them a little bit though. Up by seven with four minutes to go and wound up losing on kind of a last second shot by John ja Morant, who is going to be a lottery pick more than likely for Murray State. Last network break, Luke, it's gonna be a good one. 74-68 here at the Forts. Three 
56 left between the Green Bay Phoenix and the Evansville Purple Aces. Again, Alex Gould, Luke Seller on the call with you. We appreciate you being with us on the call today, three days before Christmas. Again, Christmas definitely come early for us. The fact that we, you know, get to, get to, get to be paid to call, you know, college basketball, one of the most just prol proliferating sports, and it's been fun with you, partner. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it, Alex. It's been good to be here, and I think we've had a great basketball game here and going to be a great finish at the end of this game. Yeah, you know, it's going to be a great finish. The Phoenix are going to look to push. They're down by two possessions, down six points. Sandy Cohen the third. Is he an option? Again, Hankerson now, as you see, checks back on the floor. He's going to inbound it for the Phoenix. He's playing with four. McLeod's playing with four. If you're the Purple places, you got to go right after, you know, Hankerson and McLeod defensively, right? Is too easy for Sandy Cohen the third. Foul called on the floor by Marty Hill. Probably a smart foul. As Sandy Cohen the third was just going to blow by Marty Hill. Nice out of bounds play by Coach Garner. Green Bay, nice execution as they're looking to cut this lead and keep this game close. And Alex, Green Bay is scoring on average 14 seconds each possession they score. And so when you score that quickly, a four point lead isn't much. And so for Evansville, this possession is an important possession. To be smart, to be able to make a play. If they can get a bucket and extend the lead, because Green Bay, no matter what happens on this possession, is going to get it out and push it down the floor. So Sandy Cole in the third now with 14 as you get a press here. One of the first presses we've seen. Timeout called by Shamar Givens. Smart timeout call. So we're going to stay here. So Green Bay's lone road win came against Eastern Washington. That was on November 16th. They have not won on the road since. They are one in five. This is a really scrappy, good Purple Aces team and a really good Purple Aces team at home. I'm gonna keep mentioning it, but again, Purple Aces loss in the non-conference to Jacksonville State at home was almost unheard of. That was like Kansas losing, it really was, like Kansas losing an Allen Fieldhouse at home, you know, in, in Lawrence. And so the Purple Aces, again, they don't like losing here at the Ford Center. Phoenix trying to come away with a minor upset. And I think Evans will trying to protect home court and really a smart timeout call by Gibbons. Coach McCarty having time to drop a play. This is an important possession for Evans will here to be able to defend their home court. And then they've got to get back in transition regardless of what happens here. To be able to get back after this play is going to be a big part of being able to extend and, and finish this game out for Evansville. So Hankerson, who's on Givens. Givens can, gonna look to exploit him. He's got four fouls, McLeod has four as well. Little Frederick in with the ball, 15 to shoot here for the Purple Aces, 3.35 to go. Risky pass over to Givens. Givens, the scrappy guard, gonna look to kick. Coleman for three, chance here, no good. Off the front iron, over the backboard. So again, now the Phoenix have a chance to go down one possession again. Back in the ball game for the Purple Aces. Coleman that's got what, a good look. Got that's where Coleman started the half, so he missed yeah. that one, but a good look, great drive by Givens once again. Evansville does a great job of spacing the floor. Givens and other guards, KJ Riley getting into the lane and then making that extra pass. So Danius Hodkavich's checks back in. Him and Bell gonna work down low against one another. Foul will be called on the floor. This will be free throws. Not a smart foul there. That foul is on the freshman, not smart. This will send Sandy Cohen the third to the line with a chance to go down by either two or three. And scoring with a clock stop too, Alex. And really smart play by Cohen. He's a veteran player. You can tell just from his composure, he likes being in these close games and he likes these opportunities to be able to figure out where these moments are at. First free throw good. One possession game as Cohen looks to hit the second and go down by two points. A really nice run here for the Phoenix. Are they cooking at the right time to end this contest? As that one is short. You could see that one was short from a good distance, so it'll stay a three-point game, 3.15 to go. Purple Aces faithful getting into it a little bit here. Shamar Givens over to Newton's two freshmen too, Luke, on the floor. Danny's hot just looks to work on Bell. He gets the rebound, second chance opportunity. Frederick King for three, this one no good. And the rebound to McLeod. The Phoenix have a chance to either tie it or take the lead. This pass in to Hemphill. That one off of the tank. It'll go back to the Purple Aces. That was a possession kind of wasted there for the Phoenix. It was, and Sandy Cohen trying to make something happen that maybe wasn't quite there. Green Bay now picking up full court, running and trying to trap to be able to create something here. And interesting, going full court too, Hankerson still has to be careful. They, they need him. They need him here. He has been 
their most prolific scorer so far this afternoon. He's got 18 points. Shamar Givens left open for three. That one no good. And again, the philosophy from Walter McCarty is if you are open, shoot the basketball. I like it. I think as a player, you're confident. McLeod step back three, good. He buries it. That's back to back to back threes for McLeod. We are tied at 74 with 2.10 to go. Timeout, Walter McCarty and the Purple Aces. Oh, baby, what a step back jumper by McLeod. Woo. Huge shot by McLeod. And as we talked about, he missed his first four, but then his hit, hit these other shots. He comes out really a contested shot, but gets him. High arc on it and knocks it down. Wow. McLeod with the step back jumper. A three from well downtown here in Evansville. All of a sudden, you look at the score, and you know, at one point, it was an 11 point lead for the Purple Aces. That is no more. It's erased. 0 0 ball game. 214 to go. And Jake Call McLeod's been a big part of getting them back into it. Confident. That's a tough step back shot. Especially on how heavily Cabbage contested. Is too. I mean. Heavily contested. And McLeod earlier in the game with a three that got him going when they were down and they needed somebody to get him into a rhythm. McLeod's made some big plays for him. This Green Bay team is a nice ball club. And you really look at when you play Creighton and you play Michigan State, you get down 11 on the road. You've got some confidence, and Coach Darner has done a great job of building that in his team. And even even Cohen, who started off slow and Evansville played great, has now got 15. And so you get Hankerson adding in with 18 points. Green Bay's got some serious weapons, and they really can push the basketball. So here down the stretch with 2:12 left, each possession is going to count, and both teams playing fast are going to have to make some smart decisions as they push the basketball. The Phoenix have played on the road at Iowa, at Oregon, at Creighton, at Michigan State last game. They were prepared for this. Foul called. Coach Darner did not agree, and that'll send KJ Riley to the line. And they jump the screen, the trap on the screen as it comes here. Quick trap, they decide out of the timeout to jump the trap. Both guys trapping. Probably got a little bit of body on him and a foul. It looked like the foul was on Cohen, but Hankerson's got four. So I think we got a little bit of confusion here. Coach Darner would not have been happy if that was on Hankerson. You do really have to, especially now 208 to go. If you're the Purple Aces, I mean, this is a game of chess, checkers, whatever you want to call it, whatever your favorite board game is. You know, you really do have to look at it as if you're the Purple Aces, you got to get Hankerson or McLeod, especially McLeod now that he's on fire. you got to go right after those two guys, don't you? And I think for Coach McCarty, it's been looking at that, but also just matchups and being able to execute, staying with their offense. Sometimes you get too excited about making sure you get a guy a fifth foul, you take out of what you've done. Evansville's played well today. K.J. Riley, two more free throws, has really been big for the Aces tonight. K.J. Riley with a team high, 22 points. Two minutes to go here. Hankerson kicks out to Bell. Bell shot fake. He's going to go to the rim. He's got nowhere to go. Good defense by the Purple Aces. That's Hankerson again. Two-point shot no good. A chance there for the Phoenix. Rebound corral by John Hall. You can hear this faithful, this Purple Aces faithful. They're going. Big rebound by Evansville. They've given up a lot of offensive rebounds. They did not give that one up. Coach McCarty's got to be happy that they secured that huge defensive rebound right there. Again, the Purple Aces averaging the second most fans at home in the Missouri Valley Conference at 4,768 a game. They got 5,011 here on tap. Turnover for K.J. Riley. A minute 20 to go. They look to push. This is McLeod. Will he heat check Marty Hill? Instead, he'll go to the basket. He tries to find Sandy Cohen the third. Cohen the third. Over to the tank. Tank for three in the lead. No good. Rebound to Danny is hot. Cabbages. 1-10 to go. Tough turnover last possession by K.J. Riley. He's made some great decisions all game, but just jumped the passing lane on that one. Evans was lucky to get the ball back and still have the lead. We're a minute left, potentially from deciding a winner, but a big turnover by John Hall. And I kind of mentioned it earlier. We were talking about it. I don't know if I like, I know you got two bigs in there. I don't know if I like John Hall trying to handle the ball up top, especially that far away from the basket. And I, I think for, for Evansville, and you'll see a, a sub right here as Kuhlman comes back in, but for 
for Evansville, it's two turnovers the last two possessions offensively, just making good decisions. But even bigger for Walter McCarty's trying to get a stop right here. Sandy Cole in the third, working on Hall. Good move to the basket, a chance at a three-point play. Instead, the basket did not go. So Sandy Cohen will go to the line with a chance to tie the game up at 76. Sandy Cohen does a great job when he gets into the basket of making contact, still getting his eyes on the rim, trying to make a finish. Didn't finish that one there, but has done a great job of getting to the line, especially down the stretch here, drawing the foul earlier before the play even got going and having opportunities now a couple of different times and attacking the basket to at least get fouled and get to the line. Sandy Cohen hits the first. And this is interesting now. If, if, if Either way, do the, if, the, if Green Bay scores here, if you're the Purple Aces, are you looking to go two for one or do you get your best shot? As he misses the shot and it doesn't even matter. It's a one point game. And you don't have to foul now if you're the Phoenix. You don't have to play the fouling game. 40 seconds left. KJ Riley working on Cohen at half court. So a big missed free throw by Sandy Cohen. He's trying to poke the ball out of KJ Riley's hands. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. What does Walter McCarty have drawn up? Five to shoot for Riley, working on Bell. Lay in good. What a shot by Riley. High percentage play. lay in's good. Will Coach Darner play it out? Sandy Cohen, the third's got it. Does he want to go for the two or go for the three? Lay in no good. And no fouls called yet. There is eight seconds left now. A foul was called. What a defensive stand for the Purple Aces. This crowd absolutely loves it. And down the stretch, Evansville with a huge defensive stop and a rebound. I think it makes a huge difference down the stretch if Coach McCarty can get his team to be able to lock in defensively. And a big time drive from KJ Riley. He's he's been their leader throughout the season and today has made made the plays when they need him to. And again, if you were you know, Sandy Cohen, you had the option. Did you want to try and set up and shoot the three, maybe kick to McLeod or Hankerson, or did you want to go straight to the bucket? He opted to go straight to the bucket. Purple laces able to swarm him defensively, maybe not a great decision. Cohen had a plethora of options on the wings to try and kick after he drove. He, drove, he got three defenders on him, instead tried to take the contested shot. Lay in was no good. As the referees are going to put eight ticks back on the clock, so eight seconds. Take a look at the last one. KJ Riley just getting the pick and roll, finds the matchup he wants, turns the corner, gets the defender on his heels, puts his eyes on the rim, puts it high off the glass and right up and in. He's really done a great job of being able to find his opportunities when he has them and then making the extra pass when he doesn't, which is allows Green Bay can't double team him because they know he's going to make the extra pass when he has that opportunity. Really an unselfish play throughout the game allows KJ Riley to have a great isolation at the end of this game. Purple Ace is 23 of 27 from the line. Now 24 of 28, that's over 85%. What a job by Evansville at the free throw line. And now if you're the Phoenix, again, you don't need a three, but you need to score as quickly as possible. That's what they do best. Sandy Cole in the third. He's stopped immediately. He's got to chuck one up. This one's well short. And the Purple Aces are going to extend their home record to six and one. They are six and six overall. They have one more non-conference game against Miami, Ohio on the road next week before the Missouri Valley Conference play starts. What a game, Luke. What an absolutely great game on both sides. Great game. KJ Riley with 24 points, seven rebounds, really led Evansville and just got him into their rhythm. Had opportunities, and when he had opportunities, he took full advantage of them. It was a great basketball game. Hey, it was a pleasure working with you. Merry Christmas to you and your family, and Merry Christmas to all of you guys, and happy holidays. It's, it's a good time of the year. Purple Aces, Faithful, love this one. They win it 80 to 75. For Luke Zeller, I'm Alex Gould, saying so long from Evansville, Indiana. All games airing on ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Go enjoy the rest of your week, and go get your Christmas shopping done. I know I need to.